Cutting a Sparrow's Tongue A Japanese Fairy Tale A Retelling Edition 3 Long ago, in a time so different from ours, in the deep countryside of Japan, there lived an aged married couple. They lived in a humble house and worked hard tirelessly day in and day out. The old man had laboured the farms for many a long year. The old woman tended to the house and the chores. The old man was a humble, peaceful and a warm-hearted gentleman. The woman was a short-tempered, spiritedly old lady that would lavish a wicked tongue, dragging down the spirit of the old man and indeed anyone who crossed her path. Her viper tongue and venomous hate often spewed like a babbling brook. The old man let it wash over him like a faint rain. He had little in the way of worry for the ramifications of his wife's wickedness. They had no child, so he didn't fear the anguish and pain. He just took it on the chin. What gave him solace was his adorable and beautiful sparrow. This sparrow he named Suzume-san. He had her in his house for many years. He loved the bird dearly and spent hours teaching her tricks and even, astonishingly, the power to speak. Not too unlike a parrot. Yet, this sparrow could articulate appreciation and adoration. Every day, after a hard day of work in the field, he would look forward to returning home to his sweet little sparrow. His wife was loathsome of the sparrow, but then she was loathsome of everyone. Nonetheless, she permitted him to keep his lovely, sweet little sparrow. The sparrow Suzumi-san gave the old farmhand the lift in spirits he needed amidst the constant drudgery of his wife's wicked tongue. Each day as he returned, the sparrow would sing sweetly and fly out of his window and rest on the shoulders when the sparrow heard the latch of the gate unlock. One day, a seemingly normal day, the farmer set out to the farm to do his daily grind whilst the wife stayed behind at the house, as always, to tend to the laundry and other matters of housekeeping. The method of drying clothes in those days in Japan was to prepare some starch for application. So, the lady set about making some rice starch in a small bowl. She then went to tend to other matters of her domicile. When she returned, she let out a furious growl. Where is my starch? The little bird Suzumi-san, being so honest and pure of heart, swooped down and bowed her head in shame and whispered, I am so terribly sorry. I have eaten it. I believed it to be some food that the farmer had left out for me before his hard day's work. Please accept my most humble of apologies. The little sparrow went on to do a number of tricks the old man had taught her in hopes that the wife would see her heartfelt apology and sincerest feeling of shame. The sparrow sang beautifully and apologised dutifully. Yet the old woman was enraged. She grabbed some rusty old scissors and squeezed the bird and cut out the little sparrow's tongue. Suzumi-san, the little sparrow, squealed in agony. The wife towered over her and screeched, Leave, never return, you ungrateful, pathetic little bird. Later that day, the old man, back aching, sweat laden and bruised from his labours, was returning merrily, as, in his mind, he would soon have the little sparrow land on his shoulder at the gate. The bond between them 
was as magical as you could imagine. Yet, the latch clicked, the gate swung open, and there was no bird song, not even the slightest sign that little Suzumi-san had ever fluttered so beautifully in the small and modest garden. He looked up at the sky and wondered, where could she be? The old man toddled into the house and in his mind he thought perhaps his wife had locked her in the cage. He never thought his wife's wicked tongue would indicate her being able to do something so depraved. He called on his wife and said, My sweetie, where is Suzumi-san? The wife lied through her tongue and replied, I surely do not know. Hmm, come to think of it. I have not seen her all day. Perhaps, despite all the love you gave her, she left you. The old man was taken aback and saddened by his wife's comments, but the beauty and magic of the bond with the sparrow were true, and he knew that the little sparrow loved him so. Like a father loves his daughter, and a daughter loves her father, the bond was immeasurable. So he went on to press his wife in a gentle but consistent and incessant manner until she said, Oh goodness, I am sick of your voice. That disgusting little bird ate my rice starch. I laboured on that rice starch for two hours. So I cut out her tongue and banished her and then pointed at a bloody tongue in the drawer. The old man was overwhelmed and dropped down onto the tatami floor in tears. Having no child born to him, that bird was precious. He wondered if the little bird would die from the inju injuries sustained at the hands of the wretch he had married. His wife laid down without a care in the world and slept easily deeply and peacefully. Meanwhile, the old man, respectful of her slumber, wept in silence. Looking out into the night, he prayed that little Suzumi-san would be all right. Eventually, his tears subsided when he decided that on the morrow, he would search for his little Suzumi-san. One last tear dropped down his cheek as he nodded off. The next day, he packed provisions and set out into the forest, checking every bamboo grove he came across, as they are the ideal shelter and perhaps home for sparrows in the land of Japan. Each time he reached the next bamboo grove, he felt tremendous fear and anxiety that his little sparrow was no more. Tears and whimpers dribbled in the forest. Until, eventually, after many hours of trekking through the forest, he came to a bamboo grove that was voluptuous. And there, nestled in the grove, was his little sparrow, Suzumi-san. He looked on with great joy that she was alive and seemingly not injured. The little sparrow went on to perform the tricks he had taught her and to his astonishment began to once more speak. The old man said, by what magic are you able to speak? The little bird smiled and opened her mouth and there, lo and behold, was a tongue. It was at this moment that the old man realized this was not just any sparrow, but in fact an enchanted fairy gifted to him to sustain his life of anguish and misery. The fairy beckoned him with her wings and said, Oh master, please come with me. You must see my home. As he walked onwards following the sparrow that we can call the Lady Suzumi. He was euphoric, delighted that she was whole, safe and had somewhere to rest. His eyes glistened and 
and so did the Lady Suzumi's eyes. They, like father and daughter, skipped through the bamboo grove, and then he found the most splendid and beautiful manor house. At the gate came the other fairies, and Suzumi said, Let me introduce you to my family, my sweet kind old man. The family cheered and said, We thank you for giving such a beautiful and kind paternal love to our Suzume. Suzume said, Here, look, this is my daughter. She wants to sing and dance for you. And so did the Suzume Odori. They feasted fine foods on pristine plates. The day was so beautiful and heartwarming. The old man, weary of the time as the sun began to set, uttered, Oh, thank you, Suzume, and all your family. This has truly been one of the best days of my life, despite it starting as one of my worst. I so feared your injuries would have taken you. I surely had to seek you out. It is a long way back to the house, and my wife, as horrible as she is, still needs her man. When Suzume heard this, she begged him to stay for a few days so that her family could give him proper thanks for the special healing love he had given to this once sorrowful fairy. The old man whispered, I must tend to my duties on the farm, care for my wife, but I'm so overjoyed and whenever I have the time I will come visit you, Suzume. And Suzumi, any moment you need me to tend to your heart, my child, I will come rushing here. Just call for me across the forest. Suzume let rip a mighty smile, despite the fact he was to leave, as his words, as always, reflected his kind and loving heart. So, Suzume called her family, and they all wished him well. But, before he left, she offered him one of two boxes as a gift for his years of love and kindness. And so the old man looked upon the boxes, one large and one small, and in his modest and humble nature he selected the smaller one. Plus, he had to get back soon. His wife would no doubt be as mad as always, not more that he was to be late for dinner, so the lighter one was better. He explained, and the family of fairies chuckled slightly, yet had a little look of pity that he had such a kind heart and had to bear the wickedness of his wife. The old man trundled through the grove with the box in his arm with a smile, but a slight worry as to what his wife would say when he returned. After a few hours of trekking, he arrived back at the house, and his wife met him with a ferocious whipping tongue. He explained the day, and showed her the box, and before she could reply, he thought to open the box to distract her anger. When he opened it, inside he found items made of gold, silver and even jewels. The value was enough for them to retire and live lavishly. The wife was so happy and said something nice for once. Then quickly her foul nature and hunger for greed got the better of her. She then went on to bully the old man, proclaiming he was a fool and useless as always as he didn't take the bigger box that could have given them a life of grandeur. The old man whimpered and sighed. Yes, darling. The old man, for once, slept in peace and deeply, while his wife stayed up in the night, calculating and forming a plot to get the other box. When day broke, the old man watched his wife trundle over the horizon as he had, in his foolishness, told her the way to the fairy home. At every bamboo grove, 
Her greed bubbled inside her. She was licking her lips like a rabid dog. When she arrived at the bamboo grove that had an appearance similar to the one that her husband had described, she began yelling like a howling monkey. Where is the house? Where are you? The family of fairies could hear her and they were not impressed. In fact, the fairies having heard the news of what had been done to one of their own were less than impressed. They despised her. The lady fairy decreed that no harm be done to her and that the old man loved her despite her wicked ways. The lady fairy fluttered over to the bamboo grove and said, Oh, and how may I help you? The old woman spat, I want the big box now, you dirty little thing. The fairy obliged. If it was what she needed to do to get her out of her family's sight. The old woman laughed hysterically and began trundling through the forest home in a somewhat slow and bumbling fashion. The box was incredibly heavy and she was so excited and for once happy. She could bear no longer the excitement and slammed the box down on the ground in the middle of the forest. She began dribbling and smiling like a hyena and then opened the box. Suddenly, a swath of demons come flying out, casting her across the forest floor. A one-eyed demon came rushing up to her and began glaring in a frightening manner. The other demons began to circle her and she wondered if the fairy had it all planned to teach her of her wicked ways. A gigantic snake hissing, a humongous toad croaking, and strange creatures that cannot even be described encircling, drawing closer. She screamed and by some miracle escaped and ran faster than she had ever run before. She returned to the house. The old man sat on the tatami, concerned for his wife, asked her, Are you okay? She said, I took the bigger box and it was full of demons. Before she had the opportunity to blame the beloved Suzume, San, the old man retorted, It is your own wickedness that has led to these happenings. Let this be a lesson to you, my love. She was rendered silent. And in the coming days, she began to repent for her wickedness and opened her heart to things of kindness, compassion and adoration. Finally, the old couple lived happily ever after, warm-hearted and merry. <laughs>